Hello everyone, in this tutorial we'll be going over how to simulate a simple magnetic uh, north-south magnet in open foam. Um, this tutorial will be very simple because there is no existing um, def uh, sample tutorial in the standard open foam repository. Um, so I did have to do a bit of digging to uh, get this to work. and. Uh, <coughs> And as you'll see, there are there might be other ways to set up a simple uh, magnet. So um, <clears throat> first, let's briefly go over the code. Uh, you can find all the code in the link in the description at the GitHub repository. Um, our case folder here contains all of the open foam configuration files. This clean script um, removes all of the generated files from the simulation and mesh. This contains the GMesh script, um, which uh, meshes our, produces the, the domain. And uh, this run script is all you need to run in order to get a full simulation from start to finish. <coughs> so if we look at the run script, we can see it's just a simple uh, generate of the mesh with GMesh, conversion, um, mapping of GMesh names to open foam names, and, uh, and then finally magnetic foam. So let's take a look at the mesh first. You can see our simple axisymmetric domain. It's a wedge here. This line here is the axis of symmetry. And we have a simple uh, rectangular cutout. Um, note that I made a cut, I made a line here, you can ignore that line. Originally I was going to extrude the center volume um, in order to try to test out uh, um, uh, like a ferromagnetic, you know, the, um, test out the effect of, uh, you know, like ferromagnetism where, where you introduce an iron uh, core for example, but uh, for this tutorial I'll just keep it to um, simulating uh, the magnetic field of a simple magnet. So this this cutout boundary represents the magnet and um, unfortunately all um, what seems to be the way to set this up is to define a man magnetic potential scalar which has units of amperes on your boundaries. Um, so here I've defined a positive fixed magnetic potential scalar on the top, zero on the side, um, a negative, negative of the same value on the bottom, and then zero on the boundaries. Um, <clears throat> so let's just take a quick look at the fully formed mesh. You can see it's a simple unstructured mesh. Okay, uh, now let's take a look at the case files, the boundary conditions. We only are solving for one, uh, we only have to specify one uh, scalar uh, field, and that is uh, psi, which is the magnetic scalar potential, units of impure, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, that would be this specification. Uh, since there's no magnetic foam tutorial, I had to write all of this from scratch and figure out uh, the right uh, um, values for, for all these things. So here we, as, as we expect, we have the wedge of type wedge. Uh, fringe, I've named the outer boundary, uh, and we just set it to a fixed value of zero. Here, the side as well, and of course the top and bottom, one and negative one. Uh, so if we go to constant, uh, all you need is the transport properties, and you actually don't need anything here. You just need to specify a magnets list. Um, it'll error out if you don't specify even an empty list. So, but I, I have these sample entries here for a future video and for your information of what what should go here. So what I'm thinking currently is that you can make a baffle a magnet with a north and south pole, but I'm not sure yet. But if you can do that, I'll make I'll put that out in a future video. 
But here we're not using baffles, of course. And we can take a look at the change dictionary jig, the mapping of GMesh names to um, open foam names. Everything is a patch, except for the wedge. So you can see that there. And for control dig, you just specify magnetic foam, pretty much the same for other uh, other um, repositories, and of course, write format bound uh, binary for the for axisymmetric because due to the uh, closeness of points, you want to preserve all precision because of the the uh, axis of symmetry you can have points that are really close together, um, or points near the axis of symmetry. And of course, for our schemes, it's pretty standard specification. Might even be the you know default in most tutorials. And solution, you just need to solve for psi. And uh, magnetic foam only runs one time step, so you need to set the rel tall to your actual tolerance. And if apparently, magnetic foam uses simple, so you just plop in some you know standard values for that solver. Um, and that's about it. Uh, oh, I always forget to go over the mesh in more detail, the mesh script in more detail. So here we have the magnet, uh, simple magnet radius, magnet height, uh, and the domain radius, which I think are pretty self-explanatory, and these are the grid, grid size parameters. So first we just um, make the points and then the lines for the magnet, um, and then of course, uh, we need to save up these air loop lines and magnet loop lines to represent the uh, the perimeter of the dim the surfaces we want to make a mesh inside. So, uh, in this tutorial, I don't use the magnet loop lines like I alluded to earlier because I'm not actually using the volume of the uh, magnet. I'm simply specifying the magnetic scalar potential on the boundaries of the magnet. And we have, uh, and of course, we are using the air loop lines, which is which define which um, circumvents or uh, circumscribes our uh, our mesh our domain that we that we saw earlier. Uh, and then, of course, we get to the domain and we, you know, make those lines, add it to the air loop lines, and then of course make the main mesh surface, and then rotate it out to get the extruded, extruded 3D wedge and then of course define our names here <coughs> that are recognized in open foam and the physical volume. So <coughs> since I can run it readily for you uh, since it's only one iteration it's, it runs pretty fast so you can see it's already done. Now we can take a look. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's. So you kind of have to check the volume fields manually. You probably can't see it in the screen. Let me adjust this real quick. The volume fields here, because for def uh, by default it's not included for some reason. And of course, B is the magnetic field that we want to see. Press apply, and we go to the last time step and press B. And uh, here you can see. Yeah, the um, magnetic field colored, and uh, let's see here. And we want to add here. You can see a streamline. Oh, you can barely see that. We want to put a streamline out here for, um, in order to see the magnetic field lines. Uh, the resolution of a thousand is a way too many. Let's just do twenty instead. Um, and then let's do, let's see, display, no, I can't do that. Okay, um, so yeah, so that, that automatically goes to the corners of all the domain, of the entire domain. As you can see, I prefer the coloring, we can change the coloring here.
to solid color it's kind of easier to see and we can make a oops but um, so by default the stream tracer the stream line which basically has uh, seed points distributed throughout the line uniformly and from those trace out the the streamline. I prefer to manually set up my own line so I'll go back to doing this and it's real easy. All you need to do is control P on the point you want the line to start and then control P again at the end point and then, pr and then press apply and of course you get your lines in the area that you desire. So here you can see what we expect from a magnet. Let's do that a little better. The magnetic field lines that we might expect. Um, so if you go here, you can see we have this north or south pole. I'm not sure which sign of the magnetic scalar uh, uh, scalar field value is is corresponding to north or south. But if we say this is north, it's going south as we as we know from you know um, typical uh, magnet field line diagrams. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a really simple simulation, but um, I thought it would be helpful because there is no known default simulation in uh, uh, in the standard OpenFoam tutorials uh, folder. So um, I do plan to do more tutorials with magnetic fields, definitely, um, given that there's a huge lack of them. Um, yeah, if you have any questions or if I got anything wrong, please leave them in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching.